Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Joe Chem. All right, this video is gonna be short and sweet, gang. All we're gonna do is talk about two reactions. Reactions of which we have two reagents that are kind of the stars of the show. One of which, uh, potassium permanganate, you may remember from your time in uh, our early days in benzene chemistry, depending on what your teacher taught, and manganese oxide, which I'm guessing might be a little new, but also could be from your earlier benzene days. So this might be review for you. And if it's new for you, well, guess what? We're learning stuff. So let's just take one at a time and learn some stuff. Okay, gang, so if the reagents for these reactions vary slightly, obviously go with whatever your professor or your teacher is telling you, but I'm just taking this from the textbook Vold Heart that I'm working with. Okay. So when we do oxidation at the benzoic position, right, let's remember, obviously we're going to need a carbon that is in the benzoic position, right? So in this scenario, we just, just have this alkane chain coming off the benzene ring, that fits the bill. Benzoic position is rahar. So your only criteria for this uh, reaction is that you need to have at least a CH bond in on like on that benzylic carbon, right? And clearly we have two, so we're good to go. So when you do this reaction, all that's going to happen is you basically cleave whatever the chain is, and you're just going to form a carboxylic acid on the benzylic position. Okay, as simple as that. So if I gave, even just gave you something like this, I just similarly had this and this. And I'll even just include this down here. And again, if you just use KMnO4, you don't have really the basic acidic conditions. Remember, I just took this from the textbook. Obviously, the most important part is that you have the potassium permanganate present. So I hope you can see we have CH bonds here. We have CH bonds here. And we have no CH bonds at this benzoic position because it is quaternary, right? So what's going to happen is we will form carboxylic acids at the bottom position, at right here by number one, two, well actually technically we go the other way, one, two, three, four, five, and six. On four, we get a carboxylic acid, on one, we will get a carboxylic acid, and lonely old three stays a boring old alkane because, alkyl substituent, because no CH bonds are present. If you want to know more, dig into the mechanism. And if you need to know the mechanism, comment on this video because uh, I don't have it obviously worked out, but I can provide that if there's a need for it. Okay, that is KMnO4 in its glory. Time for MnO2. Okay, gang, so let's look at manganese oxide. So the deal with manganese oxide is you'll need to have a, an alcohol on your benzylic carbon, okay? So clearly that fits the bill in this situation. And even if I had an alcohol just anywhere else on my, even if I had this going on, manganese oxide is going to selectively oxidize alcohols on the benzylic position. So what you're going to get here is a ketone there, and then these other alcohols will not be touched. So that's the beauty of MnO2, right? With potassium permanganate, it kind of just brute force chops things off and gives you, and just hands you a carboxylic acid. But with manganese oxide, very eloquently just knows it has one job and it does that job at a specific position, right? So if you look at another example, just kind of want to give you another look at the reaction, could do something along these lines So if I toss in some MnO2, and the textbook did have acetone and 25 degrees Celsius here, felt like those were pretty generic reaction conditions. However, whatever is going on in your class, remember to use those reagents. So it doesn't matter, just know that I was aware of this and didn't just like forget about it. Uh, so let's look at this. In my mind, I see, okay, I'm going to oxidize this alcohol right here. Obviously, I'm not going to touch this one because it's not in the benzylic position. And you may jump the gun and think to yourself, okay, I have an alcohol to oxidize that position. But remember, 
we can't oxidize a tertiary alcohol because we will break the octet rule. So if you go ahead and look at your product, you should expect a ketone here, alcohol here, and remember, we can't oxidize this because if we had this substituent right here, we would obviously be breaking the octet rule. So just a little way to oxidize selectively at the benzoic position. Okay, gang, thanks for coming along this oxidative journey with me at the benzoic position, and I'll see you all in the next video.